I pray that this afternoon we are going to be blessed by the lessons from the Bible. <clears throat> but let me ask you something. Have you ever played this game before? You go to this big shopping center where you have many people walking around. But uh, you have, you want to play a little trick. So what you do is this. You stand in the middle of where people are walking about and you just um, look up. Just do that. And uh, soon or later, uh, at least one person is going to do this. <laughs> Most likely, one person. And, and when you have two people doing that, then you are going to have a little more people coming. Looking up at the same direction. And when you have so many people doing the same thing, pretty soon some, someone may say, Oh yeah, I see it, it's right there. <laughs> see what? <laughs> There's nothing there. You know, we can be so dumb. When we follow a crowd, in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, talking about the last days. I, I know, I know. The last day thing is, what can I say? I mean, even on TV, uh, even media entertainment, <clears throat> it's like everybody is talking about the last days. Even Mayan calendar is somehow pointing to the last days. Even I Ching is also pointing to the last days. Even... Some computer scientists, they somehow figured out that computer, if you put all these information together, computer itself can predict the future. And they're also talking about the last days. It's like everybody is talking about the last days. Maybe you're saying, oh my, I have enough last day diet. I'm overloaded. Please, no more last day. But you know something? You may have that kind of attitude, but, but the reality is this. Perhaps we are not talking about the last days enough. In the right way, according to the Bible way. And when we look into the teachings that we read in Matthew chapter 24, it is very interesting. We begin to realize the last day, the scariest thing about the last day is not so much the destruction, earthquakes, and the mass uh, um, epidemic diseases and death. Yes, these things can be pretty scary, but Jesus spent, he emphasized much on the the spiritual and psychological preparation for the last days. Much more than just physical preparation. Uh, look at it with me in Matthew chapter 24. Go there with me. Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew 24, in the beginning we saw the... Uh, we have been observing the chain reaction. I know we were talking about the domino effect. Perhaps this is the bad domino effect that we are going to see in the last days. First, we uh, read about the, the false Christ in verse 5. Verse 5, many false Christs will come and deceive many. And after that, what do we see? Wars and rumors of war. And after that, we see nations are going against nation. Once again, Jesus made this point. 
that if you want to know something about the last days, pay attention to what is happening in the religious world, false Christ, and also the political world, rumors of war, nations going against nation. And right after this, what do we read in the Bible? The Bible says famines, pestilences, earthquakes, disasters. There will be disasters. And somehow, as we studied before, these global disasters are going to bring the nations together. In the beginning, they are, go they are going to try to find ways to solve and to recover, recuperate from these uh, problems. However, based upon the language of Jesus, it sounds like disasters are going to get worse and worse and worse. So much so that when they cannot really figure out how to solve it, when they cannot really explain it scientifically, when they cannot really resolve it, they begin to find ways to blame the problem to some people. And in this case, it looks like God's people are going to be blamed and they are going to be hated for the disasters in the world. That's when all nations, they come together. United, they used to be divided, but now they are united to hate God's people, to persecute God's people. But, but the greater question is, how will God's people going to respond to this worldwide hatred? Well, according to the Bible, some people will be offended. They will begin to betray and they will hate one another in God's church. So things are going to get pretty bad in the last days. But yet, look at this. While, so, <laughs> the religious world is, go is, go is, is going pretty bad. Politically speaking, pretty bad. Nature, pretty bad. Environment, pretty bad. And all this is going to kind of come together, somehow produce persecution. Persecution itself is pretty bad. But even during the time of persecution, it looks like not everyone... Not everyone is going to have the same spirit. The Bible talks about betraying and hating each other. Now that's pretty bad. But now observe what's coming next. In verse 11, go there with me. And the Bible says, and what? Many false prophets shall rise and shall Deceive many. You know, it is very interesting. Based upon the observation, it looks like, it looks like false Christ. When false Christ deceive many, all these people that are deceived, somehow, huh, they, somehow all these people that are deceived, they are connected to what's going to happen in the political world. But now, we see false Christ, uh, false prophets, Rising up right after the Bible says in the church, the members will hate each other and betray each other. During that time, the Bible talks about false prophets rising up. Look at this timing. What is this? Let me ask you something. When things go really bad in the church, church members are hating each other. Church members are betraying each other. Church, church members are fighting. Conflicts. Bad attitudes. They don't like each other. During those times, it is very... It caused the church to be vulnerable 
to false prophets. Now, when the Bible says false prophets, now how do you think they're going to act? How, how do you think they're going to appear? Do you think they're going to say, Hi, I am a false prophet. How they, how, what do you imagine? Do you think they'll come in the, you know, long hair, chains around their neck, you know, uh, uh, leather pens, and scrubby looking, has a cigar in his mouth, and he says, hey, I'm a prophet. And you're going to believe? Uh, usually, if, 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 if they're going to be false prophets, at least they should mm, act holy. What do you think? They should be really nice. Yes. Very loving and sincere and kind. Watch this. When there is so much hatred in the church, you are opening yourself if you are part of fighting, you are making yourself vulnerable to be deceived by someone who seems to be really nice and sincere and kind and religious and spiritual. So be very careful. Be very careful. You know, some people, this is the reason why, my friends, many church members who has a lot of complaints. They don't like the church. They're fighting with the church members. They don't like that person. They don't like this person. You know, many times they end up following some strange cult. So be very careful. Just because you have one or two, you know, things about the church, and you know for sure the church is really doing bad, be very careful. Satan says, oh yeah, you're right, church is bad. Let me show you something. Oh, this person, look at him. Ooh, he's pure. She is pure. Look at the long dress. <laughs> yeah, look. Oh, he studies Daniel and Revelation. Ooh, look at the quotation from Spirit of, Pro Spirit of Prophecy or writing from this prophet. Oh, look at this. And they're like, yeah, ooh, spiritual, holy, good conversation, good manner. Ooh, just follow. Whatever they say must be right. So be very careful when, you, when your blood temperature is so high with complaints of the church. And Satan says, Good target. And your complaints may be based upon the Bible and the writings of the prophet. But because of your attitude, because of your attitude, you are opening yourself up, perhaps to be deceived. Now, but there's something that I want you to know. Check this out. When you study the Bible, you need to give consideration to this one simple fact. And that is, when you see certain word repeating itself, you need to pay attention. Like uh, we saw the word deceive four times. Pay attention. But there's another word. Check this out. In verse 5, once again, go there again. Verse 5, for uh, next word please. For, next word. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. What word is repeating there? Many. Verse, uh, look, uh, look with me, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Hmm. And then verse 10, and then shall, next word please, 
many be offended. And verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. How many times do we see the word many? Many times. <laughs> hmm. You know, sometimes um, some things are so profound, but it's so simple. Jesus keeps using the word, many, pro many false Christs and many shall have deceived. All nations will come together, and many be offended in the church. Many false prophets, and many shall be deceived. So what can I conclude? There's one thing for sure. In the last days, there will be many deceivers and many people that are going to be deceived. What do you say? Yes or no? Okay. okay. Now, who say that? I didn't say that, right? Jesus said it. Therefore, my friends, is it possible? I know you can be, you know, very loud, um very logical thinking, I understand. But is it possible, because Jesus used the word, many false Christs, and many shall be deceived, many false prophets, many shall be deceived, many shall be offended, and because Jesus said, all nations come together, is it possible that when we say, many deceivers will be there, and many are going to be deceived, can I say, in the last days, the majority of the people will be wrong. Yes or no? Is that, is that possible? Based upon the trend that I see in the Bible history, that seems to be right. Therefore, here is a conclusion. I know we can talk about what are the wrong ways? There are many wrong ways. And sometimes it's, it takes time to figure out all the wrong ways. And um, trying to figure out the right way, there's only one right way. But if you are trying to figure out all the wrong ways, there are so many. So just let me help you out and make it really simple for you. And this is how you can detect what is the wrong way. The wrong way is going to be where most people are going. If you are thinking, if you are feeling, you are doing things what the most people are doing, most likely, that's the wrong way. Oh, but then you're saying, Oh, yeah, of course, of course, we are Christians. We don't drink, we don't smoke, we don't drug. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, we understand. But let's go a little deeper. We are not just talking about, you know, just, actually, we're not, we are not just talking about, you know, secular people versus spiritual people. Actually, a lot of, a lot of these people, now, False Christs, are they secular people or so-called religious people? Religious people. And the people that are deceived by religious people, most likely those who are deceived by religious people are also what? Ah. Many are offended where? In the church or outside? In the church. Uh, many false prophets, are they are they secular or religious? Religious. Many are deceived by these false prophets. Most likely, they can also be. So what am I saying? You know what Jesus is saying? Majority of the religious people are wrong. That's a tough one, isn't it? So how do you know? You are going the right direction. How is it? Now, that sounds really bad, huh? 
Maybe some of you are thinking, oh, oh man, give up. That's too much. Then who can be saved? Well, let Jesus explain himself. Amen? And don't look at me as though I have some answer. Look at the Bible. Read it for yourself. All right, here we go. Verse 12. And because of iniquity shall bound, the love of many shall wax cold. In verse 12, we see these two main, uh, two, uh, main words uh, mentioned in the same text. These two main words are iniquity and love. Somehow, obedience and love, they are connected. But look at the chain reaction, all right? Now, it is very possible that these verses are connected. Meaning, let me explain. Verse 11, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive. Many, and the question is, what will be the result of many people are being deceived? Iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. So then, here is the conclusion. What is the, the majority way? Lawlessness and love shall wax cold. Now the question is, okay, wow, wow, this is... Not only in the world, iniquity is rising and love is waxing cold, but in the church as a saint. And you're thinking, oh my, then who can be saved? Who can be saved in the church? Well, let's see what Jesus says. In verse 13, the Bible says, But he that shall what? Endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So please tell me from the Bible, not your opinion, not my opinion, just based upon what the Bible says, what is that key word that helps us to understand who shall be saved in the last days? Endure. So that word endure becomes a very important word. Yes or no? I mean, if you really think about it, if you really think about it, there's no instructions to the Christians, I mean, clear instructions to the Christians until now. Jesus has been talking about, oh yeah, false Christ, bad. Ooh, politics, bad. War, bad. Um, natural disasters, bad. Persecution will come, bad. Oh, many people shall be offended in the church, bad. False prophet, bad. You see? Just keep telling all the bad news. But then here, here, here we have, in a sense, for the first time in Matthew 24, telling us exactly, okay, this is what we should do. And the key word is endure. Endure what? Endure all the things that Jesus already mentioned. All right, then. When we use the word endure, what does that mean scientifically? Yeah, that's still too spiritual. And before we see, when you, when you study the Bible, when you, study, when you do a word study, you need to consider what, what does it mean logically and literally and academically first. Endure. Patience, okay. Perseverance, okay, good. What else? Survive, okay. Stay firm. Overcome. Wow, okay, good, 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 good. You can hold your peace now. <laughs> Do you enjoy going into um, hot sauna yeah yeah okay if you go into the fire in order to stay there you have to endure yes or no endure until when
until you cannot bear anymore, right? So endure means, if you, if you have to endure in the fire, you got to stay there and not, not get burned. Are you with me? You, ha you have to endure what is happening outside, but maintain what you have inside. Are you following? If you are in the cold, if you are outside in, during cold winter, snow and, and, and wind, you have to endure the freezing temperature. If you're enduring, that means you are not you are not you are not freezing up, right? If you're enduring, you're maintaining your own your own heat. So endure means you are not allowing what is happening outside to affect you inside. But this psychologically speaking this is pretty tough. Here's the reason why. We, naturally, we like to follow people. Many are deceived. Many are deceiving. Many are doing what? Iniquity and the love of many shall wax Go. So the majority will go that way. But if you have to endure that, you have to go to the opposite way. And that is not easy. For example, let's just say you're reading your newspaper um, on your front porch. But suddenly you see this man running in, in front of your house, really fast. And you're like, hmm, where is he running to? Okay. And then five minutes later, five minutes later, you see two people running, same direction, really fast. What's your reaction? Hmm, where are they going? Five minutes later, now you see 10 people running really fast, same direction. You'd be like going out into the street, tiptoeing. Where are they going? Five minutes later, you see 100 people running really fast, same direction. What are you going to do? Wait for me! <laughs> I have no idea what's going on over there, but I, I'm dying to know, right? You're both very curious, and at the same time, you are very interested to follow what the most people are doing. To fight against that current. It's going to be tough. So then, opposite of iniquity, what is it? Obedience. Opposite of um, uh, love of many shall wax cold, what is it? Love. Obedience, love, and then maintain that, endure, keep that until when? Until the end. And this requires patience. And the question is, are we going to have that kind of people in the last days? Well, let's see. Put your finger right there in the book of Matthew and look with me in the book of Revelation, chapter 14. Revelation, chapter 14. Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12, the Bible says this. Talking about describing, all right, describing the characteristics of the last day people. Notice what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12, the Bible says, Here is the what? Patience of the saints. 
patience endure. He are they that what? Keep the commandments of God obedient. And the what? Faith of Jesus. And many of you, you already know, in the book of Galatians, the Bible says, faith should work by what? By love. So when you, when you read this particular Bible text, this text is describing the characteristics of the last day people. What do we know about them? Do they have patience? Yes or no? Are they obedient? Yes or no? Do they have faith and love? Sound just like what Jesus said? Yes or no? So when Jesus said he that endure unto the end, what kind of people are going to endure unto the end? People with patience. They are obedient. Do they have faith and love? Yes. So then what is obedience? What is faith? And what is endurance? What is patience? Can't you see, my friends, all these words are connected to what, what happens in our mind mentally, psychologically, emotionally, but most of all, spiritually. Great storm is coming, it's coming really fast. But who's going to endure that storm? But, but here's the thing. Just because I say, endure unto the end and you shall be saved. Just because I say this, or the Bible says it, many times this is the way we digest in our mind. Okay. All right, Brother Gregory, the Bible says it very clearly that we got to endure unto the end. So, mm, I am going to pray more. I'm going to study the Bible more. I, I'm going to be involved in outreach more. I'm going to go to the church faithfully. I'll be there five minutes before church door opens. I'm going to pray, make sure I'm going to pray one hour every day. That word endure, it gives you this idea of exactly, you're, you're getting yourself a tough me. And, and, and you're imagining this, this commitment, this focus, this concentration. Yes, with God's help, I shall endure unto the end. And you bite your teeth hard. And your eyes are focused. And you say, praise God, hallelujah. I am enduring unto the end. <laughs> um, but, um, <laughs> but the reality is, you know, this. I will do this. I will do that. I will be faithful. I will be obedient. I will pray. I will... That kind of enduring is very burdensome. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Mark. Uh, by the way, do you have something to do after this meeting? Okay, good. Can I go a little more? All right. Let's not be limited by technology. Just because the videotape is only 60 minutes, doesn't mean I should just speak for 15, 60 minutes. Okay. Uh, Book of Mark. Uh, look at this. You're going to love this one. Look with me in the book of Mark, chapter 4. Yes, chapter 4. Uh, we're talking about the, the coming storm, the end time. But um, here is a story about storm. And look at this story. I love this story. Now, check it out. Mark, chapter 4, and verse 20, uh, 35, 35. You there? And it says, and the same day when the even was come. You know, evening was come. The darkness is coming. You know, it's just like the last days. The darkness is coming upon us. He says unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. 
Okay. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat up into the ship, so that it was now what? Full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Do you like that story? It's nice, isn't it? You remember hearing that during bedtime? I've got children's story, uncle author's Bible story. Which part do you like the best in that story? Which part? Which part do you like? Peace be still. You like that? Oh, can you imagine the wind, the, perhaps the rain, the, the thunders and lightnings and the boat is rocking and back and forth. And, and the disciples came, oh, Jesus, help us. And Jesus standing up. You know, he, 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 you know the, the lightning didn't wake him up. The thunder didn't wake him up. The rocking boat didn't wake him up. But the cry of human suffering woke him up. Oh, how touching. And so Jesus stood up and the wind was blowing. His hair is going like this. And, and, the, and, and the rain was beating on his face. And, and even though the boat is going like that, but he's like standing very strong. And then he raises his strong arm, his arm that he built from carpentry, doing carpentry. But anyhow, he, built, he, he, he stretches his strong arm like this and says to the, the angry sea, Peace, be still. And then suddenly the storm is gone. And then great calm came over them. And you're like, oh, my hero. <laughs> you like that, don't you? <laughs> and you're like, oh, Jesus, please take away my storm. Take away my problem. Take away my disaster. Take away my trials. Please help me. That's what you do, right? Okay. So it was a good thing. It was a good thing. It was a very good thing that the disciples cry out for help. Yes or no? Yes? Yes? Okay, but the problem is you say yes too fast. Um, but the problem is, uh, look at the Bible, look at the Bible. Look at the Bible. The problem is in verse, um, uh, verse 40, it says, And he said unto them, why are ye so what? Fearful. How is that ye have no faith? Jesus turned around, okay? After rebuking the sea, peace be still. He turned around, he says, why are ye so fearful? You have no faith? He rebuked the disciples. So Jesus, he rebuked the sea and the disciples. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You should get a little confused by now. Huh. Uh, hang on. <clears throat> We're supposed to ask for help to take away storm, yes? That's what they did, yes or no? But then why? They got rebuked. It, it, I mean, I, I know it wasn't like that, but it sounds like, why did you wake me up and do this for you? Why couldn't you do it on your own? <laughs> it, but the shocking thing is this. Why are you so fearful? What do you mean fearful? No faith. Fear means no faith. Faith means no fear. Why are you so fearful? No faith. Huh? <laughs> uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I know you are the master, you're the great teacher, but come on now. We asked you to help us. What do you mean? 
We believe that you can do this, so we woke you up. How come you're telling us that we have no faith? This does not make any sense. Are you thinking? Do you still like the part, oh, take away the storm? Oh, then what are we supposed to pray? We love the storm? <laughs> What's going on here? What, what, was the, what, what was the problem? Okay, uh, back to the basics. Is it wrong to ask God to take away the storm? No, 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 no. It's okay. You can pray like that. Then what's the problem here? Uh, let's read. Um, let's look at the details again. The Bible says this. In verse 38, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, and asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now they ask him for help. When? In the beginning of the storm, in the middle of the storm, or when? I am not sure, but it sounds like in the midst of the storm. Uh, how do I know? Because in verse um, 37, the Bible says, And there arose a what? Great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. It was now what? Full. You know what that means? They waited until the ship became full of water. Therefore, they did not ask him to help in the beginning. Yes or no? And the question is, and, 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 and most likely, I know, this, I know that was a great storm, but it was not like, you know, suddenly there's a storm, and then ship got all filled with water. There was a time, right? Gradually, boat was filling with water. Yes or no? That means they did not ask for help in the beginning. Why? Because the storm is not that strong? No, no. The Bible says a great storm came. How come they didn't ask for help? They felt that they can what? Handle this. I can almost imagine what Apostle Peter was thinking. Not because he has the same name as I do. I'm almost guessing he's like, you know, tough fisherman. Hey guys, storm is coming. Hmm. Hey, Jesus sleeping. Let's give him a safe ride. We can take care of this. Hey, come on. We are the fishermen. We live in storm. Storms are our friends. We know how to handle them. All right, John, James, and Andrew. Okay, you guys, get ready. We're going to protect Jesus now. I can almost imagine they're saying things like this, something very similar. And, and, and in the beginning, they're all confident. Yeah, hold that rope. Yeah, yeah, hold on to that. Push, push. You know, they, I can almost imagine they're doing this. But then, it's getting really, it looks dangerous. The waves are really high. The water is coming in. And I can almost imagine Peter's now panicking. You know, when a fisherman's panicking, you better panic. Like when a pilot of an airplane is panicking, <laughs> you better do your prayer. But so the, the Peter was panicking. I can almost imagine Peter panicking and he's crying out, Oh, James, pull harder, harder. John, take the water out. Matthew, you just save yourself. All you know is about money. <laughs> Our uh, professional CPA there, just kidding, you know, save yourself. But anyhow, rest of you, do your thing. I can, so I, I can almost imagine they're just crying out. But then it became too much, too much. Too much. So they came to Jesus after they experienced failure. What failure? They cannot save themselves. 
They came to Jesus. But the, but the thing is this, watch this. When they came to Jesus, what did they say to him? Oh, Jesus, our great master, the master of the universe, please, could you wake up and calm the storm? Did they ask like that? Oh, we trust you, we love you, we have full faith in you. Did they, did they ask Jesus like that? You know what they say? Don't you care that we're going to die? Don't you care that we're going to die? Now, now in today's language, I mean, even back then, when you say, don't you care that we're going to die? This, uh, this, what kind of tone is this? Sarcasm, disrespect, accusation. Accusing who? Jesus for not... It's like, you don't care? What does that mean? He doesn't. Don't you love us? Is there something wrong with your character? Is there something wrong with you? I mean, why don't you... I know you're tired, but are you that tired? Check this out. Here is human psychology. When you try to do your own, when you're, when you're pushing for your own success with your own strength, whether it is secular or spiritual, you do it, do it, do it, do it. But when you come to a point that you cannot do it on your own, guess what you do? You blame God and blame other Christians in the church. I know the storm is coming. I know the Bible says, endure unto the end. But don't be deceived. There is a counterfeit endurance. The counterfeit endurance is righteousness by works. It's the mentality. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be obedient. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. No, no, don't go there. You are going to get tired, and you're going to give up. And you're going to blame yourself. You may not even blame yourself. You're going to blame other people and God and just give up. So when the Bible says, when the Bible says endure unto the end, you know what that means? In order to endure unto the end, Somehow, you have to put yourself aside. But, but when I say, put yourself aside, and you're thinking, yes, my selfishness, my ego, my pride, and all the bad things. But it's, it's more subtle than that. Selfishness can also include things like I'm going to make myself spiritual. I'm going to do this. Let me, give, let, me, let me give an example. Here I'm trying to be a good Christian. I wake up in the morning. And you're supposed to do what? Pray and have your morning devotion, right? Here I'm reading the Bible. But then my friends, they are talking to me. They're bothering me. Not bothering me, but, I mean, they're just talking to me. But I feel irritated. And in my mind, what do I do? Can't, in my mind, I say, can't you see I'm trying to be spiritual? Why are you bothering me? Let me read the Bible. <laughs> if you bother me one more time, I will kill you. <laughs> you know what the problem is? Guess who's having the Bible? Me, myself, and I. <laughs> Jesus is not there. <laughs> that kind of endurance 
will fail you. The storm is coming. Tribulation will come. Persecution will come. Disasters will come. Attacks will come. But the biggest hindrance is yourself. You must be free from your uneducated, stubborn, self-centered self. That, the only way to get rid of that, you have to keep watching selfless Savior, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Logically speaking, that is the only way. Just because I say you have to give up yourself, you're like, okay, self be gone, self be gone, self be gone. It doesn't work that way. You have to change your focus. And that requires persistence. It takes a good fight, yes. But it is, it is a fight of faith. Let me end with this. These disciples, they should have listened to Jesus. I mean, listened to every word that Jesus said. What did Jesus say in the beginning? You forgot, right? Go back to the chapter again. Mark chapter 4. In verse 35. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, what? Let us what? Pass over unto the other side. Who say that? Jesus. Is he a creator? He is the creator, right? So creator says, the master of the universe says, let us go to the other side. What does that mean? Whatever he says is going to come to pass. So he says, let us go to the other side. Guess what? They will be on the other side. Yes or no? That's what Jesus said. He didn't explain fire, water, thunder, snowstorm, earthquake, tsunami. He didn't explain the details. If he gives us all the details, we get scared and then don't go at all. Jesus, Jesus simply says, hey, come, come with me if you want to live. <laughs> Let us go to the other side and we will get there no matter what. What are you saying? They should have listened, but they didn't. So ladies and gentlemen, based upon today's study, how should we pray? Yes, you can pray. God, please take away the storm. T please take away this tr trouble, this, this disaster, this, this, this headache. I mean, I'm talking about that person. Please take away that person. <laughs> oh, God, please. Transfer membership, please. <laughs> please. I'm ready to vote yes. Why don't you start a new church? <laughs> church plant. <laughs> Is how you, yes, you can pray. Yes, and I know there are some storms in your life. Oh, God, please, this business, this sickness. Yes, there are some storms that God can and will take away. But, ladies and gentlemen, there are some storms. Perhaps it's not good that is totally removed out of your life. It's always there. Why? It's to build your character. How? By revealing who you are first. Peter needs to come to a point. I cannot do this. You don't care? Please help us. Even though that was bad, he needed to come to that point. He needed that revelation in order to accept the revelation of Jesus Christ. So when you, go, when you grow up a little more, your prayers will be like, Lord, Thank you for the storm. It's okay to take the water out. It's okay to hold onto the rope. But I have confidence that we shall go through. Because as long as you are with me, 
it is okay. In fact, maybe something better thing to do, just do what Jesus was doing. Peter says to Andrew, Andrew, pass me that pillow. Let me do what Jesus is doing. And we'll be okay. What are you saying? Amen? So I know the last eight themes, last eight topics can be really scary. But really, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the bottom line is, how much are we going to trust in him? That is the question. At this time, I want to invite, I want to offer an opportunity for, for many of you, perhaps all of you. You know, keep in mind that yes, this is an individual thing, but at the same time, Time to time, we need some help from brothers and sisters. Amen? And as you can see, something's happening in Geelong. I mean, I never knew that there was a city called Geelong until, like, you know, recently. And I can see that God is moving upon this church, and especially with the young people. And they're trying to promote this care group. A very dynamic, spiritual group. And this is where you can practice, exercise, selflessness, and the joy of fellowship, and studying more of the Word of God. So I wonder if there's anyone here today that you'd like to say, God, I need to change my, my environment. I need to start coming to the church and um, not only come to the church, not only come to the church, but get involved. And perhaps this care group thing is going to really help me to grow spiritually. Because I cannot do this on my own. I really need this handicapped baby steps in the beginning. I need spiritual brothers and sisters done clubbing, done dancing, done drinking. A bender done that. It's kind of empty out there. When the bottle becomes empty, you know your heart is still empty. I need something more. So now you're asking, where can I go? Listen, God is doing something here in this city. And I want to invite those who are really seeking for spiritual fellowship, a small care group format. If you'd like to join, please stand where you are. If you'd like to know more information, if you'd like to get more ideas, how you can be part of it, to join the care group Please stand at this time. And also, there's some of you thinking, you know, I need to get back into the Word. I need to study the Bible more, step by step, back to the basics, really understand what God is saying to me. I need the Word. I need a Bible study. So if you're interested to receive Bible studies and to join care group, please stand where you are. God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you. God bless you, sister. Anyone else? God bless you. Is there anyone else? Bless her. What we're going to do, we're going to get your information. So these cards will be passed out to you, and I want you to fill them out and give them back to 
the person at the end of your aisle. Is there anyone else who are saying, God, I need to know more about... Uh, in other words, I need to be spiritually active. But perhaps this care group, Bible study, joining church activity is going to really help me. And I really want to encourage you to get involved. Anyone else here today? God bless you. God bless you, sister. Cars will be passed out to you, and please fill them out and give back to one of these ushers or pass it to the end of the aisle. Perhaps many of you are already walking with Jesus and you feel as though you are having a good, spirit-filled walk with God. But I want to challenge you even more. I want you to become thinkers. You are a Christian. Not because of your parents, not because of your friends, not because of those people, those members in the church, but you are a Christian because you know that this is a truth. And you know it is a truth because you know how to explain it to someone else. But then you realize. I don't know how to share this. I don't know how to share this truth to others clearly from the Bible. I want to challenge you, invite you to make a commitment, not with yourself, but with God, with His help. God, help me not only to be a faithful Christian, but help me to be a Christian that knows how to Show the truth from the Bible and from my heart. If you do, please stand where you are. God bless you. God bless you. If you're interested to fill out these cards, please. Can ask the usher. Let's all stand for closing prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Bible. In many ways, O oh God, we are totally lost without your wisdom and your knowledge. What is happening around the world today and what is happening around in our city, in our community, in our church, sometimes they are just too overwhelming. And many times we do not know how to make proper decisions. Basically, we do not know how to think. So God, please, instead of relying upon ourselves to solve all the problems, teach us to seek the greater wisdom from you. Help us to realize that going to church is not enough. Help us to realize that the greatest, the, the greatest deceiver is not so much those that are out there, but it is us. So please awake us. 
and to help us to realize that we need you so much. We thank you. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your long patience with us. May we continue to learn and to grow. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.